Hello, welcome to the next in our series of videos on IFRS and IFR corporates. I'm Sandra Thompson, I lead our global accounting technical team for financial instruments. I'm here today with Heert Wagnam. Heert's Dutch in origin, you probably guess from his name, and he's been working in the UK with my team on applying IFRS 9 to our corporate clients. Today we're going to talk about hedging net positions. Now here, this is a very common strategy corporates use. So can you tell us a bit more? Yes. So what a corporate would typically do is they, they would look at a, at a certain time period and whatever cash flow would occur in that time period. So let's say they would look at a dollar, for example. They would look at how many sales would I have income and cash flows for and how many purchases I would have payments for in that month. And instead of doing derivatives for both flows, they would take out a derivative which just covers the net difference of the two. So let's say you have 100 of sales and 80 of purchases being settled in March, you would take out a derivative of 20. Now ideally, you would want to hedge both those flows, but IS39 doesn't allow you to do that. So what you need to do is you designate the 20 uh, as, the first, as the hedge of the first 20 of sales. And if you then look at the accounting, what would occur is that only 20 of the sales would be recorded at hedge rate and not the 400 and the 480. So ideally what clients would like to do is have the 400 and 480 at the hedge rate, but that's currently not allowed. Under IFRS 9 it's changed, so you can designate both the sales of 100 and the cost of sales of 80 as being your hedged item. So if you adopt this new IFRS 9 approach, you effectively split your derivative between the 100 of sales and the 80 of cost of sales. But if you do that, there is a slight wrinkle, because although the cash flows might happen in the same month, typically the accounting entries don't. In particular, the purchases will typically become inventory, and they will actually go through the income statement in a later month. And that means that when you do the hedge accounting, some of that hedge accounting effect is coming through in the first month when the sales happen, and some of it's coming through in the later month when the costs of sales are booked and the purchases go through the income statement. Here, that still all sounds really good. Is it as good as it sounds? Um, not as good as it sounds. Um, the biggest thing is that uh, what corporates really would like to do is to record the full sales at the hedge rate. Um, the ISB, however, in allowing this model of the net position, have said that the hedge adjustment will need to be recorded in a separate line item. So you're not allowed to actually adjust the full hundred of sales for the hatch rate and the full 80 of course a good sales for the hatch rate and you'll end up having it at the spot rate with the hatch adjustment in a separate line presented and the, similarly the 80 cost of goods sold in our example would be recorded at the spot rate when the inventory got delivered and the hatch adjustment would again be on a separate line. Now it's important to point out that, that's, uh, that that will depend on how you designate it so the IS39 designation methodology is still allowed so you could still do that and effectively get 20 of your sales at that rate and the rest of it at the spot rate. So it sounds like that's another choice that companies will have to make. And from what you said, it sounds like designation is going to be key. Yes, um, that's right, because you need to make clear in your head's documentation again what has been designated. So where do you actually designate the, the total elements making up the net position or whether you follow the IS-39 designation. Now, we've spoken before in another movie about cost of hedging and the designation option you have around those. If you do designate the net position under the new IFRS 9 designation and apply a cost of hedging model, you have so many choices and calculations to do. It gets really complex really quickly, so it's something to watch out for. Thanks, it's really helpful. So just to recap, IFRS 9 does allow more flexibility with hedges of net positions. So you can designate all of the net position, in our example, the 100 of sales and the 80 of purchases. However, in terms of income statement presentation, you might not get the answer you want. You'll get 100 of sales at the unhedged rate and the 80 of purchases at the unhedged rate and then a separate line item with the hedge adjustment. And this is another choice that you have under IFRS 9. So therefore designation is key and making sure you designate upfront in the way you want to. And the further thing to bear in mind is that when you combine this with cost of hedging that we talked about in one of our previous videos, the calculations can get really very complex. That's it for today. I do hope you'll listen next time. Bye-bye.